All right, welcome to a very neat show that we have put together for you to help compare the cities of Austin, Texas and Colorado Springs out in Colorado. I have a very special guest on today and I'm a guest on her channel as well. Her name is Susanna Haney with Colorado Real Estate Group. Very nice to meet you. And then I am Randy White out in Austin, Texas. Hi, Susanna. Howdy. <laughs> oh, yes, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so, I'm super excited to be on your show. Thank you so much for having me. Of course, yeah, and thank you so much for having me on your show as well. So this is going to be aired on both of our channels. We felt like these two cities have a lot of similarities as far as people seeking us out. Um, but when you actually really dive into the two towns as we have for the show, you can actually find that there's a lot of interesting differences that might help people decide whether Colorado is the right spot for them or Austin, Texas. I want I don't want to say Colorado versus Texas because those are very different. <laughs> but yes. um, Colorado Springs and Colorado versus Austin, Texas um, can tend to have the same population looking at them. So we felt like this was a really relevant show to have. And we're going to dive into talking about the different styles of homes that we have here, what the markets are like for shopping in here. Um, and also just kind of the overall mm, payment process, property taxes, the cost of living. So lots of really neat information that we are excited to share with you. Yes, absolutely. So Colorado Springs is a town, it seems an ever growing town, uh, but uh, currently we have 693,000 and that's been uh, just ongoing. I think pretty much like Austin, just ever growing and we do have our growing pains. I, I will admit that. Just real quick for a reference, how big is Austin, Randy? So Austin used to be tiny, but it's really not anymore. We are at um, just over 2 million as of 2023. Ooh. So, um, and it's growing, I think the number said about 20% every every year or something. So it's, it's wow. Nice. Now, when I that's say the 2 million, that's not Austin proper. That's gonna include the whole metropolitan. So we've got smaller towns like Brown Rock and Cedar Park and Kyle. Um, those will all kind of plug into that number. Um, so doing that spread, if you will, that large cities tend to do, which was interesting to hear that it doesn't feel like you would have that feeling at all in Colorado Springs. It's actually a very small town in a way. Yeah, it's much smaller, even though it's actually, it's been predicted that Colorado Springs is going to surpass Denver in, oh, wow. I don't know, five years or so. Well, I don't know if, if this also expresses itself in, in our numbers, our real estate numbers, because we are a tourist town and we have become very popular. And then also because of COVID, there's been a lot of movement upwards in our real estate prices. Average price is 532000 and that was for April. Okay. Compared to last year, that was only 5% down, even though we had predictions of the crash. And uh, really, you're only 5% down from your peak? I am so jealous. Well, jealous in a way. I, I needed Austin home prices to come down. So I, you know, I'm glad that we did. But 5%, I mean, that's incredible. There's there's other sections of this country that, you know, we're doing 15, 20, 25%. So that's, that's really neat to hear. So when you say it's a tourist town, what are the tourists coming from? What do you guys have for them to, um, to dive into? Well, the mountains, okay. first of all, Gardens of the Gods is just the big draw here. Okay. Yeah, the all hiking, outdoor mountain biking um yeah oh, I mean, it's so pretty it, it is you know and, and the temperature i mean we've we've had a rough winter and it seems like we're going in a rough spring but we usually have i mean sunny weather it's amazing even when you know when it's 32 you can and the sun's out you can go out in shorts yes you know? okay yes where are your folks coming from that are moving into austin oh it's it really is all from california so we <laughs> A lot, of jokes. Yes. a lot of jokes about that, but that's because it that is just the reality. Californians love coming to Austin. And for the most part, they're happy when they get here. They came here 
um, to have some similar feelings of what they have in California while having a better price, you know, as far as, uh, you know, no income tax, but the property tax really kind of threw that off balance. So considering, you know, that I just said that we're higher in price. Yeah. So our um, average sales price for April was 532,000 compared to the peak last year, same time. Okay. We're only down 5%. So okay. that's actually, it's great news, but it's not because I know that many buyers really had hoped yeah. for a break. Yes. And, and so have I, you know, because I mean, I, I love my sellers getting their money, but I, my, my heart aches for a lot of these buyers that have been priced out of the market. And um, that's a bummer, but you know, it is what it is. So you just try to find solutions. So um, what are the different brackets that you have of when somebody's coming to shop there and they have their certain budgets? What what are the different kind of brackets that you see of, of anybody that's interested in, in going out there and understanding what the terrain looks like in that way? Folks hope really to find something under 400. Yeah. Which is really tough. We only have, so we, we sold 233 homes last month in that price bracket, so under 400, but 180 were only listed. So yeah. we're, we're having we're, we're having quite a churn and burn rate in, in that um, area. Actually, it reaches up quite high. The houses in that price bracket were on average built in 1971, and they're all pretty small, around 1,400. So what comes after the 400,000 priced homes? Then then what's the next section of homes that you would have? So I, I was a little bit more detailed because things really change after that, 400 to 500 um so now the age of homes went goes from 1971 to 1995 <laughs> so, really okay are we moving sections of town as we move through yes. these different brackets okay yes we do and we so the town was built we have in the southwest basically the center of town okay and from there it started spreading so the further east and the further north you go the newer the homes basically get and 400 to 500 i think is is a decent spot to start okay and um you on average the square footage in a home that you can get is about 2200 we have um a higher list to sales uh ratio list price to the sales price ratio of about 101 and we're also selling much more 500 to 700 now we're jumping into 3,000 square feet on average okay great um and 2001 yeah and all of a sudden we're we're looking at 99.8 percent list to sales price okay so, and are you closer it, into town with these prices or are you actually branching away from town and getting more you're branching space? away okay you're branching away you have some areas in town and you tell me later on if Austin is similar, we have just the old parts of town okay. where you have um, just the big mansions. Uh, 700 to 900, we're still in 2001. Average size of home is 3,700, but we're own, we only have 100 sales in that price range. Okay, that's interesting. I mean, those, that's a, those are big houses. So I guess it, it makes me, I, it makes sense to me to hear that there's only 100 sales for that. So that always be like a town full of these, Huge mansions. Well, <laughs> I recently saw a report that Colorado Springs has the biggest average home size. Okay. In the so once, because once you get uh, past uh, 900,000 to 1.5 million, mm -hmm. your average home is 4,500 square feet. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's <laughs> get ginormous. Okay. And, the, and again, not really even focused on being city center with those prices we're probably still on the outskirts and it's all about the size and the property itself versus location so you have certain areas where mm -hmm. people just build bigger so yeah. you have um the broadmoor area and broadmoor okay. with its hotel just has all this reputation so there are huge homes there okay. and then in the north part of town um yeah. monument woodmore area um that's where they have the room and that's where they built Built yes. them really good. Yeah, that's it on my end. But I'm okay. curious to hear how Austin is looking in terms of uh, those yeah, numbers. So it's kind of interesting. It almost seems like when you receive a buyer and you're you're interviewing them and and hearing what they want, I, I think I almost ask different questions compared to maybe the kinds of conversations that you have. So it's really interesting learning about the differences between these two cities because they they sound to have very different vibes actually when you when you dig in. Like I was saying at the beginning of the of the video. 
So when a buyer comes in, the first thing that we're going to figure out is, are you trying to be central to Austin? And so I have kind of this urban bubble that I stay inside of, um, that I'll make sure to have a map displayed of it's, uh, inside of all of the freeways. There's this big circle there and we can do prices in there from about 500,000. And this is just single families. Cause if I start getting into condos, um, then that would be too complicated, but you can do condos with enormous HOA fees in the two to 300 space, but for single families to be inside of this urban bubble, you can be anywhere from the 500 thousands and then up to like several million. Um, so depending on your budget, um, we're going to, of course, we'll start off with looking at the more to five to $700,000 homes, but you're going to be looking at a home that is probably from the 1950s to the 1970s, maybe even the really? 1940s sometimes. Yeah. That's kind of, and the square footage tends to be very small cottage. So maybe anywhere from 12 to 1600 square feet, if it's five to 700,000, then you can get into the more 700,000 to a million space. And now we're looking at maybe 1500 square feet up to 2000 square feet. Um, that's your square footage. Your home is going to still be 1960s, 1970s or cottage style, cute, adorable, vintage. Um, if you're spending in that, I think I said 700 to 900,000 or up. No, I, I'm sorry. No, 700 to a million. So, uh, yeah. And then you can go over a million. You can have still these old vintage historical homes that are beautiful. They've been maintained, they've been updated and they're just glorious and they're in the middle of the city and you can walk to your favorite coffee shops. And so they're, they're spectacular and I love touring those houses or people want to have, they don't want to fuss with the old houses, which is totally understandable. And so there's a lot of really neat uh, custom home construction that goes on in the middle of Austin. But the oh. price tag is high. I mean, it used to be we could probably play around in the one million range for the new custom builds, but now they're like really one and a half to two million to, to look at those. So um, affordability issues for Austin, for sure. Okay, so whenever you're not trying to be in that kind of urban core or the west side of Austin, then you kind of have these similar situations on the north, east, and south sides of these suburb towns. And they're all really darling and unique, but also we're just slowly spreading into them and it's all feeling like Austin. And so that's gonna be things like Cedar Park, um, Round Rock, Pflugerville, Maynard, Kyle, and Buda. Mostly, I have to make sure that you're hitting the threshold of about 350,000. Are you looking for more square footage, like 2,500, 3,000? That's certainly out there. Are you looking for big master planned communities? They definitely have that. And so it really depends on what side of town do you need to be on? How much space are you looking for? And the price ranges can, like I said, be from about 350, but can go on up to a million themselves. Really the most common prices that I see in these towns that I'm describing is about 400 to 550 right now. And our average um, price at the, our, our median price at this time is 535 for the Austin metropolitan area. And so the list to sale price ratio for us right now is about 98%. So we're not really hitting 100%. We can in certain neighborhoods and certain like hot areas. We're not doing the price correction anymore. We actually finished that in like March of 2023. Our peak was July of 2022 and we dropped about 25% and stopped falling in March of 2023. So just like you, you know, ask your buyers, where do you want to be? Do you want to be inside, outside, and so on. I have a similar question for my clients. Yes, and it's usually, do you want to see the mountain or do you want to be on the mountain? You know, how outdoorsy are you? And usually people that are very outdoorsy, they want to be close to the mountain. Yes. And that happens on the west side. This side is new. We have lots of amenities, you know, sports complexes and movie theaters and Whataburgers and In-N-Out burgers now. I feel that a lot of people that are coming from the East Coast, um, they're used to a certain style of home. And I feel like they're, they might be a little bit more drawn to the East side. And because it's new, it's also pretty, usually, okay. you know, pretty. Whereas on the West side, you have older homes and like okay. you had mentioned before. So I think one of the really big 
differences between my city and your city is basements. Yes, never experienced a basement. I just see them in movies and shows and I think they look so neat. If you were to purchase in Colorado Springs and I send you a listing and it says 2,500 square feet, the basement is included in that. For the city of Austin, so this is just Austin proper, the typical tax rate is about 2.24 because every neighborhood, every county, every city has a different rate. And then whenever you get outside of Austin, there's some towns that Westlake Hills is notorious for having 1.7 right now and everybody's very jealous of that. So what about for you guys? When I talk to uh, uh, people moving from Texas here to Colorado, it seems that uh, so far our taxes have been about a third. Wow. We have a lot of similarities in, in taxes. Just flat out, we're going to be charged 6.675% in Colorado mm -hmm. Springs at least. Okay. Um, might be different in, in Monument of North or Manitou Springs, so on. But 6.675 off the market value and the market value is calculated by any transactions that, that happened actually six to 18 months ago. I think maybe Austin has a broader range just because we're a larger metropolitan with more areas to look at, but mm -hmm. otherwise it seems very similar price wise. Colorado <laughs> is my number one um, pick if I needed to flee Texas. Uh, it would be, I would be heading to Colorado next. So I'm going to keep your number and, <laughs> and I'll make sure to be in touch. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, it's been a total delight being on your show. Thank you for having me. And I'm so glad to have you on, on mine as well. So we'll have, um, obviously both this episode aired on both of our YouTube channels. And if you want to contact myself for moving to the Austin, Texas area. My information is in the YouTube description below. My social media handle um, is your COS house for okay. all platforms. And I have an awesome website with neighborhood guides, new construction Wonderful. guides, um, school guides. So anything you, you need to just kind of kick off your search on your Colorado Springs house.com. Awesome. Okay. That yeah. sounds good. So we'll, maybe we'll have to get back together again in another year or so to just do a recheck on how these towns are doing because they're both growing so much. So they could be different all over again next year. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye.